Well, we would talk a bit about that tonight with Tracy Tim, founder of the Nth Degree Career Academy, a speaker, writer, podcaster, business consultant, and career coach. Tracy, thanks for being with us. Thanks so much, Jim. It's great to be here. Let's uh, just take a look at, at what we're talking about here. As as companies uh, look to hire people, particularly in in an era of low unemployment, when it's very much uh, in terms of worker services, it's very much a seller's market out there, and uh, uh, people uh, can uh, more than they were able to in the past to perhaps uh, dictate some terms. Now, companies like to sweeten deals with prospective employees, especially ones that they, they value a great deal, with what are generally called perks or perquisites, <laughs> little extras, if you will, uh, sort of uh, what I like to think of as the uh, chocolate sprinklies on your ice cream sundae of employment. And these, uh, these, these extras... Uh, over the years have taken many forms, but I gather with younger workers, they, they need to, uh, to be different still. What exactly, uh, what distinctions are we talking about between the old ways of enticing, let's say, uh, a, a worker of the boomer generation and some of the modern uh, generations, uh, millennials, Gen X, Y, and what have you? Yeah, that is really the question and the topic of the day right now, especially given all the economics that you just described. And what's really fascinating to me is that you described it perfectly, that in, in the old way of thinking, we would think of these perks as the quote-unquote extras, the nice to have, the, the icing on the cake, right, as you put it, the sprinkles on your ice cream. But nowadays, um, especially younger professionals don't see perks as extras or nice to have. They're essential. And it's not the nice to have perks that are essential, meaning it's not the, the nap pods and the ping pong table and that sort of thing. It's the deeper level of connection with them, giving them opportunities for things like growth, or engagement, or purpose, or impact, or knowing that they have agency, all of those things that I think some people would see as either surface level or superficial or extra are now to, to millennials and to young professionals specifically just a part of that economic and professional contract. They're did no you, longer nice to have. Uh, did you say agency? Yes. But like I don't, I don't, I don't have... even know what that term means in this concept. This is how, <laughs> how old school I am. Uh, uh, I, I've never, ever uh, sought a position in which I said, well, uh, that job has agency. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, I think in this context, agency really just means knowing that they um, have a say in something, that they have ownership over something, and perhaps even a little bit of autonomy to try something new, make mistakes, have room for growth. Um, there's definitely a sentiment, and, and because I do a lot of career coaching and I take a lot of inbound career clarity calls, one of the biggest frustrations I hear from people is that they're just told to do tasks and they're not given any sort of deeper level of strategy or understanding or engagement with the work that they're doing every day. They're just taskmasters, and that's just not fulfilling enough for this generation. Uh, if you are new uh, in a given line of work, let's say fresh out of college, I can understand that level of frustration, for example, of a, a worker of any generation if they've been, let's say, doing something for a dozen years or so. But if you're uh, smack dab off of uh, uh, the matriculation line at your local university, uh, it, it may be uh, nice to to uh, to feel like you have such power, but I'm not sure that necessarily the possession of uh, uh, of a bachelor's degree automatically confers on you the, the right to have a great deal of say-so. Sure, yeah, and that's totally uh, valid. And, and I don't think that they're asking for everything in the world. I think they just want the opportunity to go deeper. So if you're asking me to do a task, I'd love to know the why behind it. I'd love to know how it's going to impact the bottom line of the business. I'd love to know the impact that it's going to have eventually on our client or our consumer. So it's not that I need to be in charge of everything and be the CEO at 23. It's that I want to understand at a deeper strategic or analytical or thoughtful level how my tiny task has a deeper impact on the business. Mm -hmm. And that's the level of engagement that they're really seeking. And we'll get into some of the things that, uh, in fact, they do want here in uh, just a moment with our guest uh, Tracy Tim of uh, the Nth Degree uh, Career Academy. Uh, but uh, but first of all, 
for a generation that is so saddled with student loan debt, mm, uh, yeah. I, I would think that uh, this kind of thinking, while in a way I suppose is uh, high-minded, uh, uh, is a little bit removed from reality. You're in a world of hurt, young person. It may be a good time <laughs> to, to be employed uh, because unemployment is so low and, and companies may need you, but you need them. You've got a lot of indebtedness to pay off, and isn't the ability of you to pay your bills a little more important than whether or not a, a certain career has uh, agency or these other uh, perks? No, absolutely, but I think that the fallacy is that you have to choose one or the other, that you have to love what you do and be a starving artist, or you have to be miserable and a slave to uh, an organization and be and be wealthy. And in fact, what I've found, you know, through practice of my own and then also through working with clients is that there is a really happy middle ground. You can find work that you love, that takes advantage of who you are, that allows you to leverage your natural skills and abilities and the things you've learned over time and make great money doing it. And in fact, if you look at the richest people among us, the ones who love their work, as opposed to the ones who simply report liking their work, actually make twice the amount of wealth, and they make it in one-third the amount of time. And that's a statistic. So you can go to Business Insider and read that. That's where I found it. So I think that you know the idea that we have that, it, that this is all just nice to have and they're asking for too much, in reality, you know, you know this, right? If you love your work, you never work harder or longer or more engaged in your life. Um, so they're just looking for something that they can pour themselves into because, you know, Jim, like we're, we're all working crazy hours these days and, and it's asked of everybody. And all they're asking for is, you know, I, I'd really just like to enjoy some of it. And I don't think that that's too much to ask. Probably not. Probably not. one 866 jimbo one 866 on The Bohannon Show as uh, we talk with Tracy Tim, uh, founder again of the Nth Degree Career Academy and, uh, uh, is there? Does the Nth Degree Career Academy have uh, a, a website? Uh, yes, everything can be found on my website, which is tracytim.com. That's okay. just T R A C Y T I M M dot com. And if you search that and then the Nth Degree, you will find all okay. the information there, really about the academy and what it's for, and and how we really promote this idea of career clarity. Because if you know how you're this wonderful, unique asset, and how you add value in the marketplace. People who go to potential employers and who go through interviews and things like that, and they tell those people specifically how they're going to add to the bottom line of that business or how they're going to improve and increase things like customer retention and engagement or uh, profitability within the company. Those people, as to your point, right, are the ones that companies are going to pay a premium for. So we really help people align those three major things, what they care about the most, what they're naturally gifted at, and then what they've learned how to do over time. And the combination thereof is their sort of, you know, I call it your, um, your Olympic level athlete event. It's what you are sort of uniquely built to be a gold medalist at, except we're talking about the workplace. More to come. Stay with us. one 866 jimbo one 866 We'd love to have your thoughts and feelings about this, perhaps even your personal experiences. Perhaps you have been on the cutting edge of this generational divide, and uh, whichever side you were on uh, felt frustrated dealing with the other side. one 866 jimbo one 866 We'll be back in just a moment. And uh, we're talking with Tracy Tim, founder of the Nth Degree Career Academy. And you can learn uh, more about that, by the way, at her uh, website, which is her name, T-R-A-C-Y-T-I-M-M dot com, Tracy Tim dot com. And uh, essentially looking at, at uh, a communications issue, I would say, more than anything else. Uh, James calls in from Topeka, Kansas, to uh, join us this evening. Hello, James. Hey, Jim. How's it going? I really Hi, enjoy your show. You. Thank you. Um, I really like your guest. Um, and in regards to the whole agency thing, um, you know, I would think, you know, as an employer, um, you really want to have somebody who's, you know, just had that desire to be engaged on a deeper level, you know, and, uh, uh, and, and wanted, you know, to, to find meaning and purpose in their job on that deeper level, um, I mean, I understand what you're saying, though, too, Jim. I mean, uh, people my age and my generation better just be glad to have a job because student loan debt is over credit card debt these days, you know. And uh, so I can understand your point, but, 
you know, I, I, I think she's really on to something yeah. in regards to finding deeper meaning and, and purpose. And let me add something to what you've just said. It's awfully easy for me to sit back and be blasé or even cavalier about this. I have been one of those very fortunate people who have always had a chance to do precisely what I wanted to do. So uh, I would would agree that, that I, I may tend to uh, to approach this without a certain amount of personal empathy. So I concede your point, James. Please go ahead. Oh no no no! That's that's all I was really had to say. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I can see the kind of the apathy towards this generation. I mean, uh, you know, we we were spawned from the uh, baby boomers. You know, and, and things have declined a certain amount since that time, mm-hmm. you know, and, and things aren't as, as great as necessarily they were post-World War II, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, well, so, there have been mean, a few I, changes, I that's right. Yeah. Me and some of my friends, it's kind of like, you know, yeah, I want to pay off my student loans, you know, but sometimes opportunities are such that, uh, you know, it's just like, well, the hell with it. And that's a horrible attitude to have. I don't personally have it, right. but I've seen it in my generation. Sure. You know, so. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I think point uh, well taken. Yeah, back in my day. Oops, sorry, geezer moment. Uh, go ahead, Tracy. If you, if you would respond to James, please go right ahead. No, that's all I had to say. I know, but I wanted our guest to have a chance to respond to you, James. Go ahead, Tracy. Oh, sure. Yeah, I think you know, like I said earlier, I, I don't think we have to choose. I think ideally, you know, Jim, that's what we're all seeking. That's what young professionals are looking for is work that they can engage with and pays the bills. And what's what's sad, the the pattern that I keep seeing in the clients that I work with is that they got on this career conveyor belt thinking that a certain level of success or or stature or a salary or some title was going to give them the sense of satisfaction and meaning that they're really deeply searching for. And they go down that route and they find that they're totally jaded because it was wildly disappointing. And so then they're just trying to backtrack and figure out, okay, well, what did I really like? Because, you, you know, if, if you have kids, you know, I'm, I'm, I just turned 31. My childhood was the busiest childhood I can imagine. I was going to school and playing an instrument and played three sports inside and outside of school and was in AP classes and was just so busy on this track to get into the right school. And then once you get into the right school to get the right job, and once you get the right job, you want to climb the ladder and make a certain amount of money. And somewhere along the line, we forgot, I think, what lights us up and what gets us excited and and work that we would actually care so much to do that it feels less like work. And I know that sounds trite, but like I'm on the radio at 10 p.m. at night on a Friday and I love talking about this stuff, you know? So it's, I think that it's all out there for us. And for people like you who are very fortunate to have found it right away, that's wonderful. And we're just seeing a backlash from this generation because they bought into an idea that just hasn't panned out for them. I'm curious. And, and I agree. Yeah. James, uh, uh, go ahead, please. Oh, yeah. And, and, I mean, my goal is to create a life that I don't have to retire from. And, and I mean, I've been fortunate enough to be raised to be frugal in my life. Um, hence, I listen to your show, and I'm a little more conservative. But um, you know, it, I've come to the realization that the most important asset we have in this life is time. You know, and so it, I've been fortunate enough again to conserve my resources and live as frugally as possible. And I've found that you know, uh, you can start a business and not spend as much money in your day-to-day life, and have more time with your family and friends, and not work as much if you don't spend so dang much. So <laughs> throw that out there. Yeah, and, you know, James, that comes down to you defining what your core values are, which is the very first place that I start with all of my clients. And, and we have to do that in order to know actively with purpose and with intention where we're spending our time and where we're spending our money. And plenty of us spend it in places that we don't even realize we're spending it, like however much, you know, your $4 Starbucks a day. Or we spend money in places that we know we're spending it, but we're doing it for the wrong reasons, like buying that new car or that new purse or whatever, because it's what the people around you are doing. But if you're true to yourself, then I think that you can walk that really fine line in the middle where you are taking care of your responsibilities and, and living within your means and your circumstances, but you're also not settling for unsustainable success. You're pursuing something to your point that you can do hopefully the rest of your life. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, I'm a small business owner, actually. I, I'm an artisan, I'm a knife maker, and I run a, a tree removal business, you know, and I also have a security gig that I do on the side as kind of the hourly job. 
you know, but I found so, that, you know. So you, you I, have, I let, me, let me get this straight, James. You have, you have both your own business and a salaried position in somebody else's business. Is that right? Yes, sir. Wow, you are ambitious. <laughs> well, no, I'm serious. That's uh, that's a lot. You see that a lot. We're the like we're the generation lot. of the side hustle. You know, everybody's got their their side thing going on, or they're doing gigs, or they're trying to figure out you know what their passion really is, or what they're excited about. And I think you can do that sustainably if you do things like. Uh, stay busy in both arenas and, and get your, you know, your bills and maybe your health care covered in one arena and then, you know, focus on maybe your passion project on the side. A lot of people do well, that. That's, that's exactly right. And, you know, I think that is one benefit our generation has had from the baby boomer generation, you know. I mean, they're dreamers, right? You know, not all of them. But, uh, <laughs> so we, we have a tendency to take a chance on things that may not be as more realistic as, as some other people would say, you know. All right, fair enough. Anyway. Appreciate your thoughts, James, and uh, yeah, thank you. you. Very, very thought-provoking. Good luck in your uh, your careers, plural there. One eight six six five zero Jimbo. One eight six six five zero five four six two six with our guest Tracy Tim. You think that James is uh, is typical in a lot of ways? You know, I do. I see a lot of people who are pursuing something that looks maybe more steady and traditional on paper. And on the side, they've like, it's been coined the side hustle. It's your, maybe I freelance or I'm writing a novel or um, I do sort of like fashion consulting or I'm, I really got into the Marie Kondo movement and I help people tidy up their homes. You know, everybody's got something that they do on the side that they're pretty excited about. And that's exactly how I started my business. I wasn't profitable day one helping young professionals find work that they love and helping companies, you know, attract, engage, and retain great talent. I had to bridge the gap. And, and a lot of people are doing that. And I think that's the sustainable, responsible way to do it, as opposed to jumping into a whole bunch of debt, taking a ton of big bets. It's taking those small little risks along the way to get to where you eventually really want to go and then test driving all of your assumptions along the way. Definitely a popular route. All right. We'll come back. We'll talk some more with our guest, uh, Tracy Tim, founder of the Nth Degree Career Academy and uh, one who sees this uh, every day. And, and it still it, it strikes me as as uh, largely an issue of uh, communication that, that, that you may have uh, two groups which uh, don't differ that much, except in so far as uh, how they are understood by the other. Again, her website is her name, T-R-A-C-Y-T-I-M-M dot com. We're at one eight six six five zero jimbo and we'll be back in just a moment. Tracy Tim, our guest, is founder of the Nth Degree Career Academy, and we're looking at uh, what motivates uh, young uh, workers today to become a part of a company, to join a company, to stay with a company, which is another thing I might add, by the way. Uh, is there less of what might be called employee loyalty, uh, Tracy, on the part of today's young workers. I'm not saying that you should uh, be forever grateful and bow down and scrape to the, the wonderful <laughs> masters who give you this money uh, for working at their little job, but I am suggesting that just as a matter of fact, that turnover among younger workers is probably higher than it was among their parents, correct? Yeah, so I'm really glad you brought that up because I want to make the very clear point that there is disloyalty on both sides of this transaction, meaning young professionals saw our parents go through the Great Recession and many downturns before that and see a complete lack of loyalty from the organizational side to the point where now, you know, things that used to be total normal nomenclature like a pension if you ask a 20 year old what that is they have no idea it doesn't exist anymore so i think that what you're seeing is a trend towards really spending for yourself because that's the way that companies work when it comes down to it i mean after the sort of jack welsh ge movement we're definitely seeing that companies are prioritizing the bottom line over their people and that's why you have phenomenons like southwest airlines who everybody raves about because they have this phenomenal culture it's because they care about their people more than they care about their customers and when you lead with that kind of ethos then you instill loyalty in your people it's not something that is just going to be given to you as an organization right away and that's because we've seen most organizations don't necessarily give it to their people in return. I want to look at uh, some of the, uh, the the things that are being offered out there uh, these days, uh, just uh, looking at uh, at uh, some of the things that uh, 
well, for example, gone are the days of simply offering summer Fridays, uh, free snacks, unlimited vacation to lure in recruits. Uh, companies now, in some cases, are ponying up for uh, free restaurant level meals, spa <laughs> treatments, uh, yeah. this sort of thing. Uh, uh, at Airbnb, they want employees to visit, uh, enjoy getting around the world as much as its customers, and they. A uh, vacation rental uh, listing site offers staffers an annual $2,000 stipend to travel and stay in an Airbnb spot anywhere. Uh, Reebok offers CrossFit classes. Uh, Genentech has an on-site spa and a car wash. Uh, Spotify, uh, in addition to one month of flexible work options for parents coming back to the office, the company covers Egg freezing and fertility assistance, which can cost more than ten grand. Netflix, unlimited parental leave. IKEA, paid parental leave even for part timers. Uh, Goldman Sachs offers an all night scavenger hunt, uh, described by the Atlantic magazine as part performance art, part nerd Olympics, and part urban scavenger hunt. It has raised more than a million dollars in a single outing. Uh, American I Express do that. commitment. I yeah, seriously. <laughs> American Express's commitment to to new moms, uh, uh, up to five months of paid leave for new mothers and fathers. Uh, birthing mothers can get an additional six to eight weeks for paid medical leave. Starbucks full tuition reimbursement, in and out free burgers. Uh, uh, if uh, you're going to be flipping burgers, uh, in and out has free double double burger and fries offered to employees on every shift. Facebook, free Ooh. housing for <laughs> interns. And the list goes on and on. Uh, gourmet uh, Google has free gourmet breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, those are just a few of these. Uh, yeah. is, this, is this the coming trend, and is this necessary? Because I, I trust that employees understand that uh, a company uh, can only spend so much on employees, and whatever they get in perks comes out of salary, ultimately. Well, so this is a really interesting question. And, and if you just like, you know, if you guys are listening and you just heard a lot of the things that Jim brought up, if you think about the nature of somebody like Google offering free breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you know why that is. It's because they never want you to leave the campus. You have absolutely no excuse to leave for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or to get your hair cut because they have that on campus, or to ride to do exercise because they have gyms and bicycles and books, right? The whole idea that, that's kind of insidious but really brilliant is that these companies are giving incentives to employees to get them to work more, not to work less. And that's, I think, the misconception that maybe, and I, and I definitely don't want to generalize about generations, but I think certainly if you're not used to seeing things like that, it can be very easy to look at that and say, wow, this is just a whole bunch of money being thrown at people that's going to eventually come out of maybe profitability of the organization or your ultimate take-home pay. So there's a couple things to think about. First and foremost, like employees are now looking at total benefits. So it's not just what you get paid, but it's like, maybe I'd rather negotiate for more time off than an extra $5,000 a year. Maybe I love the fact that there's a gym here because that saves me 150 bucks a month from what I would pay for CrossFit. And that's like a, a much more fair exchange to them than the number of hours that they show up being exactly what their paycheck is worth. But it's really fascinating because you see that what companies are doing is trying to build in more loyalty. I mean, if you give me paid time off, because I'm a, a working mom, like that's going to make me want to come back even more so and give my time back. There's a reciprocity principle at work there. Well, so I, 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 I see your point, but on the other hand, uh, I, I'm, I am not deeply in debt, and I've never really been deeply in debt, but always, when it came down to perks, I was always a money guy. Give me the bucks. Give me the bucks. I yeah. Mean, I, you know, like I've been active, for example, in uh, in my union, the uh, – uh, SAG after a union, Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, blah blah blah. I've been active <laughs> in that for 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 decades, and and always I was a money guy. If they were talking about you know different, uh, oh let's say uh, uh, short turnaround, let's say uh, no, give them short turnaround. I want the dough. I, I, am I <laughs> am I out of touch with what young people want today? I mean the idea of you know do I get. Uh, 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 free lunches at work or, 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 or an in-house gymnasium or an extra five grand, I got to tell you, my response to that is, are you kidding me? 
<laughs> Seriously. I hear you. I do. And it, it is, it's a, it's a mindset shift towards really wanting, and Jim, you remember, you're so lucky because you love what you're doing. So when you yes. love what you're doing, an extra five grand is what you want, right? Because you don't want anything else from your job. You already get, are getting all that other great, juicy, fulfilling, yes. I find this meaningful, I love this stuff. But it's, it's the young professionals who bought in just for the money, who said, I'm going to do this job in finance or in consulting or work for a Fortune 500 or, you know, go – back to grad school or whatever and get it massively in debt because that's what they thought successful people did. And so the more money they advocated for, the more they thought they were becoming successful. And they hit a point where they are perfect on paper and miserable in practice. And so at that point, you're like, a couple thousand dollars more doesn't mean anything to me because I'm already making more than I need to, but I hate my job every day. And that's that's the breaking point that we're getting to with a yeah. lot of young professionals and, now. And the, the that, difference, I guess, is that in the past, I think a lot of people, and again, not me, but a lot of people of my generation simply said, yeah, I hate my job, uh, but i got to pay the bills and that's it. We, we never thought to even ask for these things. So yes. I, I will grant you that the issue is not new. I think that the generational response is new. Yes. Preach. That's exactly what's going on, right? We're not, I wouldn't say, and I say we, the collective we, because I'm 31, so I'm technically a millennial. We're not asking for anything that I don't think everybody wants. Everybody wants fulfillment from what they do every day. Everybody wants to feel engaged. Nobody wants to dread waking up on a Monday morning or have, you know, what we call the Sunday scaries all day on Sunday where you're just dreading going into work the next day. Nobody wants that. But finally, this generation, because by the way, in 2020, it will be 75% of the working population that millennials make up, which is yowza scary, if all of them are just chasing money and none of them are doing anything that they love or are good at or find meaningful or have impact doing, like, what kind of world are we going to have at that point? I, I think this is just finally a generation standing up and saying, like, no, we're not going to stand for that because not only do we not have the employee loyalty thing going, which is like the company's definitely going to take care of me, so I'll just bide my time and I'll be fine. That doesn't exist anymore. So they're like, wh why would I waste any more time doing something that makes me fundamentally unhappy when I could go make probably just as much money doing something else? So you're right. I think you're absolutely right. It's not a new issue. It's a new response. More to come back in a moment. Are there any particular examples that uh, are strong either way, uh, egregious bad examples or exemplary good examples of companies who either do or do not adapt to what seem like rather reasonable requests on the part of younger job applicants? Any particular ones that uh, that are, are particularly good or bad, uh, Tracy? Oh, interesting question. Um, you know, I have seen that certain industries seem to be moving faster than others. You know, a lot of the companies that you mentioned are in tech or they're doing some kind of groundbreaking, quote-unquote, disruptive type of work like the Airbnbs and the Ubers of the world. I think the ones that are slower to come around are, are a lot of the old-school, good old boy traditional type of things like I started my career in finance and there was very little of any of what we're talking about today and that was you know because I was working on a trading floor and they don't you know suffer fools and you don't get to ask for much <laughs> but uh, you know and, and I'm sure you see it too in media right there's just the sense of like you got to suck it up pay your dues and, and I'm certainly not advocating for somebody just like running to the head of the line and like I said becoming CEO in their 20s although that happens now and it's super impressive it's it's just the sense that you know young professionals just want to be heard and at least have an outlet for their ideas and opinions they don't always have to be taken they don't always have to be used but just to know that someone is listening or willing to take your input and trust you and give you that sort of daniel pink autonomy mastery and purpose um that you're speaking in your everyday that's really what that's really what they're looking for. So, yeah, I wouldn't say necessarily I could call it any companies, um, just because I want to be nice. But <laughs> certainly, well, okay. there well, that, no, that's fine. That I, well, I mean, the, you know, they could be a client tomorrow. So, uh, duly <laughs> understood. Duly understood, they should, Tracy. They could be a client they, tomorrow. They, right? they could be a client tomorrow, exactly. Or they could be a sponsor of mine. So let's just skip that whole thing yeah. and, uh, and move <laughs> along here. All right. Now then, uh, uh, in terms of. Uh, 
Oh, the other side of the coin. Uh, young people, there, there is a point uh, here, uh, and I, I, will, I will give you a stereotype, and you've heard it before, and let's just address it. And that is that, uh, oh, those kids today, uh, they, they're not as dedicated to their job as we were, that, uh, that they aren't willing really to, to hurl themselves onto the, the barricades of uh, whatever the employment challenge may be, that they're, they're off in their own little world. Now, I'm not saying that that's true. I'm saying it is a stereotypical viewpoint, and I'd like yeah. your thoughts on the extent to which, if at all, it is true. There definitely is a perception that young professionals don't want to work hard. And that I would wholeheartedly disagree with. Simply, I could cite every one of my close friends and their desire to work hard, but not being given things that they really can sink their teeth into on a deeper level. I just had a call with a girl yesterday who was telling me how, you know, she's working for a tech company, she's in Silicon Valley, and all she really wants is to go that extra step deeper. She wants to know the why behind her work. She wants to do the strategy. She really wants to deeply understand the strategy. She doesn't have to be the point person or make all the decisions or, or even be in charge. She just wants to be able to know what is this task that I'm doing every day really going to amount to when it comes to the customer, when it comes to the bottom line of the business, when it comes to the mission and vision and values of the business, like what's the point? What's the purpose? And again, I don't think that's too much to ask. And in fact, if you're a company who's not doing that, you're not building deep engagement and loyalty with your people. You want people on the front lines, in fact, on every line of your business, who deeply understand the positive impact that their job has on the business overall somewhere. Because then they're going to be loyal to you and actually engaged in the work they do every day. So you're more productive, you're more effective, you're more efficient and happy. And, and again, I think that we're just seeing that there's a hesitancy to do tasks without understanding or without a deeper level of, again, I'll use the word agency, right? Or just being allowed to be empowered and have impact and feel heard. Um, and there's pushback, not on the fact that they don't want to work hard, but on the fact that they're not being treated like adults. And it's sad to watch because companies are really missing the point and missing a great opportunity to really engage with their people on a deeper level and provide that means for long-term loyalty. But that comes from really strong leaders. All right. I have another thought I'll add. Uh, we're overdue for a break, but I'm going to broach that with our guest, Tracy Tim, when we come back in just a moment. one 866 jimbo one 866 4626 What's the matter with kids today? Maybe nothing. Back in a moment. Glad you're with us on the Jimbo Hannon Show. one 866 jimbo one 866 Tracy Tim is founder of the Nth Degree Career Academy and her website, tracytim.com, T-R-A-C-Y-T-I-M-M.com. It occurred to me that it might be worthwhile for any number of companies to hire, uh, for want of a better term, a youth employment advisor. And then it occurred to me, maybe they don't have to hire somebody like that full-time. Is that the kind of work you would do for a company if they went to tracytim.com? Yes, yes. So my my heart, you know, when I first got into this business was was dealing directly with the problem with the individual, meaning helping young professionals figure out work that they love that could create sustainable success that made them rich in every sense of the word, not just financially, but also through freedom and fulfillment. And then I realized really quickly that there's actually a lot of room to grow and improve on the opposite side of the same coin, which is just helping companies better understand how to attract, engage, and retain this generation's top talent. And it's not hard. I mean, there's a lot of low-hanging fruit that all you really need to do is instill some sort of sense of purpose need to empower them and let them know that there's an outlet for their opinions and give them opportunities for growth. I cannot tell you the number of times that I've fielded calls from people who feel totally stuck because they just can't see where they can go next. So, yes, that's exactly what I love to do with businesses is really help them help their employees so that they don't become a part of the $30 billion a year that's lost in in retention and turnover and you know there's a lot of room to grow there for organizations to really like i said deeper understand their people and why they come to work every single day i have always felt that a suggestion box 
or maybe some modern digital equivalent of the same, could do wonders for morale. And I have said this to, to bosses and said it's not even as important that you actually read the suggestions. I think that would be helpful because often you will find they've got some good ideas. But the mere fact that there's a mechanism by which they'll listen to your input in and of itself is a morale booster. Do you agree? 100 percent and just the fact that there's trust and openness and and you know vulnerability which is a little overplayed but transparency that there's not a monopoly on great ideas and that there just is an outlet for the ideas and opinions of of everybody there no matter what the merit is right and we can go down that rabbit hole and that's fine but i just mean that that to stifle that conversation completely is to really cut the legs out from under some of your best people Fair enough. All right, stay on the line, and uh, we'll speak off air. But uh, as you can see, this is uh, quite an intriguing individual. Tracy Tim, founder of the Nth Degree Career Academy, a speaker, writer, podcaster, business consultant, career coach. Her website is her name, tracytim.com, T-R-A-C-Y-T-I-M-M.com. And uh, much of what we talked about, I think, tonight is simply a lack of communication, of uh, understanding, and uh, Perhaps uh, TracyTim.com can uh, be part of the movement to improve that communications. I'm Jim Bohannon, and this is Westwood One.